Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this second uh, webinar of this uh, series that we're offering every Friday, uh, 1 o'clock uh, until the end of March. Uh, today, I'm with uh, Lauren, uh, which is our uh, advanced uh, technician at Uniform. And uh, we will be talking about uh, two very popular modules uh, within the Uniform software. And that is uh, hosting Canada and uh, Pro Action. Uh, the dairy Trace. Sorry about that. So um, just a couple of things uh, right off the bat. Uh, you can always uh, raise your hand uh, using the, the control panel if you want to ask a question. Uh, make sure you unmute your microphone. Uh, so that is in the upper left corner of your uh, command center. Um, and or you can also, if you don't have a microphone, that's possible. You can also uh, type your question under the uh, the chat portion of that uh, control screen. Um, so we will. Oh, one more thing. If you're if you're not a customer with us, uh, you can also uh, click on the handouts portion of that screen. And I've uh, I've uploaded a uh, brochure uh, that uh, gives you information about uh, the Uniform software. And don't hesitate to ask us about any promotions we have uh, ongoing. Uh, and last thing before we get started, um, these uh, webinar recordings will be made available on our new website, uh, which you can find at uh, Uniform. Uh, dash agri.com uh, and you will also receive an email with the link uh, to get access to those uh, recordings so uh, without waiting anymore uh, so Lauren uh, the the floor is yours hi everyone thanks for joining us I'm excited to talk to you about these two modules today because I think they're really useful in your day-to-day -day management uh, so first off we'll start with the whole Canada module and you'll find that under the cow's head and links. And then Holstein Canada is number five here. If you're going to be using this, I recommend right clicking and adding that to your toolbar like I've done. So it'll be up here at the top for you to find easily. In the Holstein Canada module, we have some setup to do before we really get started. If you're interested in doing something with this module, uh, I suggest that you give us a call so we can help you out. There are some things that I I can do from my side to really save a lot of time on the startup side. Um, so first of all, we need to set up your prefix. That's how our registrations are sent and connected with Holstein Canada. So in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you've got a properties button. We'll open that and then choose communication settings. And here you can put in your prefix. I'm registering uniform cows today. You can also choose the properties of the report here. Uh, I'm looking 30 days back. You could also look by um, age in days, or you could include males and historical animals. And then underneath the advanced tab, I like to select all of these options just to give you a more detailed picture of what animal details you do need before sending this off. And then make sure you save with the checkbox in the lower left-hand corner and hit OK. That way your presets are remembered for the next time you enter the program. The next thing that we need to do is something that we can help you with also, but it's setting up an inseminator code. Holstein Canada requires that we send that. So at this time we need to do normal registration. So this is on farm calves, um, no ETs, no color breeds, and nothing from another dairy. So this is only your prefix. So in the data entry section, we'll go to settings in the upper right hand corner. And then if we go to the cow calendar here and select the breeding tab, we can choose your default service method and make sure we have a default um, breeder here. If you have ETs, you can put that in, but like I said, we can't do those at this time through through the um, through the module in the program. 
The inseminator code is another one of those features that really can save a lot of time if you give us a call because I can populate that for you. Uh, so all the historical animals in the program, all those breedings are gonna have an inseminator code if you don't already have one set up. All right, now to the fun part. So this is the main Holstein Canada screen here for you. You see I've got some here in blue and some in red. The blue ones are ready to send, so I've done a good job getting my data entered. And the red ones need a little bit of work. Um, what you'll see here is on the far right, we've got errors, and this just points you in the right direction for what needs to be fixed before that event can be submitted. Uh, this one here is invalid sire breed. It's a very common error. So we'll take a look at that uh, and, and help you set up your sires. So before you give me a call, you can make sure you have all the right information in. You see, I double clicked that heifer's record and it pulled me right to her sire. So the nice thing about the program is that you don't have to go hunting for where the data needs to be changed. We'll drop you off right where you need to be. So on his record here, we can hit edit in the lower left-hand corner. And that no sire breed corresponds to the long registration number. So we can put in the Holstein Canada M and then copy and paste those last numbers and hit okay. We jump back over to that tab. Now that 1166 that I was just looking at, She's turned blue and she's ready to go. The next item here is no animal name prefix. And you'll get this for every single calf. Basically, that just means that you need to go into her record and you need to give her a name. So we'll double click here on 1167. Brings us to her main, uh, her animal record on the actual tab. And just like we did with that sire, we'll hit edit here. Now you can see that under the registered name, my prefix is populated and it's in parentheses. So you won't have to add that for every calf. We're pulling that in here for you. And basically what we need to do is just add her name. And I'm just gonna be boring today and give her a number. And then we'll hit okay. Um, some things that you need to make sure that you've got here, that long registration number, needs to say the H-O-C-A-N-S, so we can change that. And there. Oops, F. And then the easy -E -I -R tag number, that's the last nine digits of the registration number, that needs to be copied and pasted here as well. So just make sure you've got those. If you wanted to give a barn name at the same time, you could put a barn name in here as well. And then we'll hit OK. And I put too many zeros. Happens to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this is why this is why we like to help you get started. Some digits I, off here. I, I okay. usually go, yeah. There you go. Yeah. We get the principle. Yeah. So that's easy enough to jump back and forth. And then on your tab here, uh, all the blue ones can be sent. They don't all need to be blue at the exact same, same time to send them. So if you've got a few that are ready to go and you wanna send those off, the send button in the lower left-hand corner is how you would send them. Uh, if you do need a rush certificate or um, an actual registration paper, you need to check these boxes and then they, they will be sent to you either rushed or with a certificate. So. Uh, if that's important to you, just make sure you're checking the bottom of the screen every time you're in to be sure that you're up to date. Uh, other things that make using this module easy, um, we can, we receive data from Holstein Canada, but it doesn't necessarily pop up with an alarm or an attention on your dashboard. So you have to periodically check the program. And I'm sure if you're sending registrations, you're checking uh, this module anyways. But once you open the module and there's a pop-up and it says nine registrations accepted, then you know your, your registrations have been submitted and accepted by Holstein Canada. Uh, you'll see the pending tab with animals that have been sent. 
under the accepted tab, those will be the ones that have been accepted. And then if there is a case where you get a rejected one, this is something that we can dig into for you uh, to figure out why exactly it's not working. Don't try it yourself, it's really impossible, but it, that's why I sit behind a desk all day. So give me a call and I can help you sort those ones out. And the other thing that you can do with, a, with the registrations is submit a picture with your registration. Uh, this is a little bit complicated as well. Hosting Canada has some specifics about how they want those files, those photo files sent. So if you're interested in doing that, you can resize the photos to meet their specifications. And we can help you with that as well on how that all works logistically. Yeah, um, let's just say that uh, today's phones are, uh, you know, even if you go to the lowest resolution of, uh, of the, the photos you're taking, uh, even the lowest uh, settings is is uh, much, much higher than what uh, the Holstein Canada um, uh, requirements are. So, uh, yeah, may, make sure you uh, you get the specifications from, from Holstein Canada, or we can help you uh, do that as well. But uh, it requires a, a little bit of work on that end, um, unfortunately, and we don't have any control on that. Yeah. Uh, one question that I do get commonly about the Holstein Canada module is, hey, I've got a calf. I know I need to register, but she's not on my list. Um, so what I would recommend is always when you're in here working on registrations, go down to the lower right hand corner and I showed you the properties, but just make sure that the birth dates of the animals you're looking to register are within that days back window so that you're looking uh, at the right pool of animals. So if we set this to 45 days and, and said, okay, I'm gonna get more individuals pulled on, onto my list. So just be aware of the window that you're looking at. Are there any questions about Holstein Canada at this time? I don't have any written questions on the, on my panel here, but uh, yeah, if you wanna ask a question, it's, uh, it's time to do it about Holstein Canada, of course. I did All such right, a good job explaining. Nobody has questions. Crystal That's fantastic. clear. <laughs> <laughs> good. So, okay, well, we'll jump into the traceability side of things. And it's really similar um, from a user standpoint as you set them up. Um, I do recommend also giving me a call and, and I can help you walk through getting this set up. There are some detailed steps here, but we'll go to the cow's head again and to the links module. And then we'll choose number six for proaction. And right now we are set up as, as a link to CLTS for the traceability events. We're in process of a direct link to Dairy Trace, but it's just not quite ready yet. So CLTS is directly sending these events to Dairy Trace for us. And so when you go into setting this up, what I need from you at first is your account number from CLTS and your username and password for that website. So it's pretty simple, but We'll, uh, we'll look at some of this together here. Similar layout here as what we had in the Holstein Canada side. The blue are ready to send and the red are needing something. They need a little work. Uh, under the properties button, we'll set up those communication settings here. So you need that uh, CLTS account number. Usually I think it starts with A and then your username and password. One additional step that's not in the program that you do need is you need to contact either email or call uh, CLTS directly and ask them to enable web service for you so that we can submit events directly from the program here. Uh, if you don't do that part, you'll get an error on every animal that says like WS event upload or something like that. And that just means that basically CLTS can't accept that from you at this time. So um, that's just something that we need to make sure we get done in the in the very beginning. And again, similar to the Holstein Canada uh, module, we're looking at a number of days back. So we can set that to a customized number of days. If you're looking at 90 days or if you're on top of it and you're doing it every seven days, uh, we can get this down to a specific of a date and um, a number of events that you're looking for. And then we've also, we can turn on and off uh, different items here. So if you're wanting to send only birth events at one time or just sales, 
we can do that too. You don't have to send them all or nothing. I'll say okay. The big thing to remember with this module is that you do need that full 15 digit NLID number. So just that ending digit, the last nine or whatever it is, that's not going to cut it. We need to go through and add the 12400 in the front. So that's something that I can do, like with Holstein Canada, in just a couple of clicks, uh, where it would take you a long time to go through and add everything. So if you're thinking about getting this started, it's really important that you give me a call and, and we can work on it together. The one thing that you'll want to set up before you call me is your suppliers list. And you can find that using your handy dandy search button in the upper corner. And on your suppliers, well, let's say we add a new one here. And this is gonna be a cattle supplier. So for anybody that you're selling to or that's bu that you're buying animals from, you'll need to create a supplier for them. Uh, you'll probably wanna put in the premises ID, that's a little bit important. And then select the cattle box uh, on the type side. So that just lets it be available for the sale events and purchase events in the program. I hit okay. And one final very important step here, your premises ID. So under program settings and farm data, this is where you can edit the basic information here about your herd. And you'll want to put in the premises ID here. So that's uh, your province and the number. We'll jump back here. So on, on this uh, module, there are a couple of background settings that are important to the CLTS link, and you'll need to put their breed codes in. So it won't interfere with the Holstein Canada module, but we do have a different breed code for Holstein for CLTS than for Holstein Canada. Uh, so we'd go to an animal record, and I'll just pick one out here. And we can hit edit. And if we jump to the pedigree details, where it says breed, if you hit the gray box with the three dots, you can browse and open that, and then hit your triangle to edit. And the whole scene breed needs to be HS for CLTS. So if you do this step, you'll get errors on breed codes. But again, if you give us a call on the front end, we'll get you set up so you don't have to deal with all those errors. And we'll hit OK. This one, same way, we'll send with the send button at the bottom. And it's just that simple. I have a question uh, here from uh, yeah. Jennifer. Uh, she is asking, uh, any idea when uh, this will be linked uh, directly to Dairy Trace? And maybe I can uh, I can answer this uh, this question. Uh, so we uh, so we're we're basically getting a release next week. Uh, it, it won't be available to the to the public, of course, because we 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 first need to test it uh, internally. Uh, but once we have this uh, internally, uh, usually it's pretty quick that uh, you know we, we we run a few tests and uh, and then we can start um, we can start making the the update available for uh, for the public. So I hope it uh, answers your question, uh, Jennifer. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> Carry on, uh, Lauren. I think that leaves us to questions. Um, Good. It's pretty straightforward. So yeah, if you have questions about it, I, I'm happy to walk through it. This is uh, kind of my project. So I'll, uh, I'll can, let you ask me. <laughs> maybe we can show you uh, where to um, uh, get uh, contact, contact information for the help desk. If you look in the lower left corner, there's a phone number there, website and uh, email address. So if you just hover uh, with the mouse, I think you, you might need to click, uh, Lauren. Yeah, there you there go. go. So you see the, the toll-free number is there and there's email as well, uh, just beside it. Uh, 
so those are the, the ways of uh, contacting us if you have uh, questions about setting uh, those modules up. Any, any other question? Going once, twice, and sold. I guess it uh, covers it all. So uh, short and sweet, uh, Lauren. Yeah, it's a it's a relatively easy setup. So if you are interested in either one of these or both, um, a call or an email to the help desk and just let us know. And usually the longest part of both of these processes is just making sure that first round gets submitted. And I like to verify within a week of submitting the first registrations or traceability events um, that everything's working. So. So you're not all alone once we get you set up either. So we'll make sure everything's working well for you once you get going. I just got one more question here uh, from Debbie. Uh, she's asking, uh, so uh, uh, she's asking, how do you get the module? Um, so these modules are uh, part of the Uniform Canada Gold and Uniform Canada Silver um, license. And you can see those at the very top. Uh, like on the the title bar, if you if you can uh, point with your mouse, uh, Lauren, or you can also go. I believe if you go to the help uh, menu, uh, I believe uh, is it program. I think it's program license. There you go. So it shows the uh, the license you're on uh, at the top there. And um, so, uh, but if if you don't see it, uh, there there's something uh, there's something wrong. Maybe your uh, your license is not uh, refreshed correctly. But uh, give us a call, uh, Debbie, and uh, we'll look into it. Um, I have another question here from Andrew. Uh, so Andrew says uh, I have errors on the Holstein Canada module. It says no animal name prefix. How do I fix it? Uh, this error right here you'll get this on every animal uh, until you go in to that animal record and give her a name so you'll go in and edit and then under that registered name you'll need to fill in her actual details and then once you save that she'll turn from that red color into a blue does that answer your question does that uh, does that cover it, uh, Andrew? Yes. Good. Okay, good. Uh, and Debbie says, uh, "Can you send a call-in number?" So it's just yep. uh, right here. So that's one eight six six eight zero seven six one one one. So one eight six six eight zero seven six one one one. All right. Any other question? Guess we're I guess we're good. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again for attending. Uh, just like I said at the beginning, these uh, these recordings uh, will be made available on, on our website uh, next Monday. Uh, and you will also get an email uh, from the, the webinar session, uh, including the, the link to the recordings. So uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't hesitate to refer back to those uh, if you need. Or again, uh, give, us a, give us a call and uh, we can help. All right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Lauren, and thanks, everyone, and we will see you again uh, next Friday, 1 o'clock.